All right, guys, we got one we just showed up here too. No air conditioning in the office space. So apparently this has been an ongoing issue. So I think we might have a, a disgruntled customer here, but we're gonna go in, we're gonna take a look. And we're gonna try to make nice with them and get their air conditioning back going again. All right, well, we know it's not supposed to sound like that. Not sure if that was the can oh look at look at this there's a wire caught up in there there's like an auxiliary cable or a pair of headphones or something in there <laughs> you see that look at it i'm not sure if that's our issue or not but <laughs> Let's get this thing opened up and take a look. I, I should mention here that these ongoing issues, I believe, were for the upstairs unit in this office space. But when we got here, this is the downstairs unit. You see, we're on the ground here. And our upstairs unit's on the roof. So this is a new issue. So we're going to dig into this thing and see what's going on. I've disconnected the condenser motor to see if that's where the actual noise is coming from. Because it was hard to tell if the compressor was running or not. So let's see. Okay. Our compressor did start. Okay, so our compressor does run. Sounds like it sounded okay too. So that means that noise is coming from our condenser motor. Before we go much further, we're going to uh, just check this capacitor. Even though the compressor started, we could have an issue on the on the um, the fan side. So let's just take that off. And there, like I said, that wire was caught in there, but it did kind of spin freely. So let's um, let's test it. let's test this capacitor and see if it's any good. It's a forty-five five. Right. Our capacitor is good on the fan side. It's a 45.5, we're reading five microfarads. Let's just check it real quick on the hermetically sealed side. Forty-four point five. So this capacitor is good. So we have a bad motor. Check that out. Somebody dropped their earbuds in there. And it got all caught up in this fan, so that's probably why this fan doesn't work. So I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to take it out of there and see if the fan works. Probably doesn't, but eh, worth a shot. We got the wire pulled out of there. Let's just bump this condenser and see if uh, see if the fan actually does still work once we find our block. All right, got our block here. Just bump it real quick, see what happens. Well, it started. Ha! All right, let's put it back. It stopped right away though. So you guys see that? So that, this motor's toast. But at least we'll get it on and we'll go, we'll go grab a new motor. You see there's, there's oil leaking out of it. Yeah, that motor's toast. We're gonna go to Carrier and uh, and get a new motor for this thing. I think it's a Carrier. It looks like a Carrier. Could be an ICP. Don't you know there is no... There's no tag on it. I'm thinking this thing might be an ICP which is made by Carrier, but getting parts for them is tricky because Carrier says they can't look up ICP's part numbers. But we're gonna put in some of these part numbers and see what we can come up with. All right, I punched a couple of these numbers in Carrier's app. Uh, service tech app and I didn't come up with anything so I took a picture of the data plate and sent it to our carrier distributor um, uh, Our carrier distributor here is pretty good. 
and we're a carrier fad dealer so usually i get responses pretty quick so we're gonna see what they say and give him a couple minutes see if he emails me back all right well i got an email back from carrier they have that motor in stock however i quoted it to our customer and they did not approve it yet so um we gotta wait for approval on that there's a lot of people involved here that's um it's a tenant and then a landlord and then an owner so um, it's a management company that manages this property. So there's a lot of people people there that it has to go through. I um, I let the landlord know what it's going to cost. And they have a, a, a limit on the number they can approve. And I guess the number I gave them was over that limit. And so now they have to go to the owner and say, look, it's going to cost this much money to fix it. And um, can we give them approval? Usually it doesn't take that long. Most time it just happens in minutes but uh, this time it didn't. So I'm gonna move on to my next call. And plus, I think the landlord wants to look and see if they can see who actually tore this unit up. They might be, um, it might be a dead end road, but apparently people come and sit on this unit all the time because the road, it's right adjacent with a road here that has a lot of foot traffic. So people come and sit on this unit all the time. And um, I guess one of them had their earbuds hanging out of their pocket and it, the, the blade caught it and ripped it away. So, uh, and tore up the motor in the process. So, um, well, that's gonna be it for this one though. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't put the motor in, couldn't repair it, but uh, we will, uh, once we get approval on it, we'll come back and put it on. All right, guys, I'm off to the next one. What's up everybody? It is April 24th, 2023. It's about 2.30 in the afternoon. I am in Ocean City, Maryland. It's a nice little beach town um, right on the eastern shore of Maryland. It does does pretty well. It's a pr pretty popular town. But uh, I am currently on my way to a, a condo that just had the roof replaced and all the rooftop condensers were apparently disconnected uh, by a contractor and then put back after the roof was replaced all except the customer I'm going to. So apparently their unit was in such bad shape that the contractor did not want to reinstall the unit. So this should be good. Um, we're gonna take a look at the unit. The customer has asked us to hook it back up. Um, he said he does not have the money to replace it right now. He's looking to do it next year. So we are going to see what the condition is of this unit and see if we can at least put it back and get them back going. I do not know what state the previous contractor left this unit in. I uh, haven't seen any pictures of it. Um, all I know is the unit is in was in bad enough shape where this contractor did not want to reinstall it after they uninstalled it. So let's go take a look. All right, guys, I just got here and taking a look at this unit here, yeah. If this is matched to the outdoor unit, it's going to be a pretty old unit. So, <laughs> look at this thing. Holy shit. What is that brand? Underwriters Laboratory? Holy crap. Man, this thing is old. This thing is really old. <laughs> I can't really find a date code on it, but wow. Yeah. All right, let's go up on the roof and see what the condenser looks like. Yeah, so <laughs> this, uh, I'd say this fan guard is, uh, is pretty. <laughs> I can see why these guys didn't want to hook this thing back up. As you guys can see from those pictures and um, and video that I did take, um, this thing is is in bad shape. It's a shit show. I can't, in good faith, hook this unit back up. Not to mention, it probably wouldn't run. That that motor is probably about to bust free off there at any time. So, 
Um, plus, I think there's some there's some legal issues going back and forth with my customer and the condo association. Um, I talked to somebody up there, um, and there there's been a lot of back and forth. So the best thing we're gonna do with this is just wash our hands of it. And um, we've given the customer a price to replace the equipment. Um, that's about all we can do right now with it. Sometimes you gotta walk away, guys, especially with a unit like that which we should have known it was gonna be a shit show coming in if another contractor would not touch it. So usually that means it's, you know, it's not the best situation. And even if I did connect everything and get the unit back running again with the condition that it's in, when those guys are done up there getting everything put back on, they're being inspected by, uh, by the county inspector. And a part of the inspection is they need to have hurricane straps to a concrete pad. That is a code here in Worcester County and Ocean City in Maryland. So they have to have hurricane straps because they're, they're on a, a condo right at the beach. So the base pan of this unit is so rusted out, you couldn't even put a strap on it. Basically, they're just little L brackets that they're putting on. That the, those those are good enough for a hurricane strap. They're putting four of them on there. So even if I was getting this unit running, you can't put any hurricane straps on it, so it, it would fail inspection. The contractor up there did his due diligence. He asked if he could put a um, a band strap or a ratchet strap around the unit. If that would that would um uh, satisfy the inspector, the inspector said no. It's got to be bracketed to the concrete pad. So we just can't do anything else with this unit. You know, a lot of guys would take one look at it and walk away, but I wanted to do my due diligence because this guy is a customer of ours and he is a return customer. We haven't done a whole lot for him though. We've done two PMs for him and both PMs, we told him what needed to be done with the unit and, and, um, uh, and no repairs were made. So, but, uh, that's going to be it for this one, guys. Um, yeah, sometimes you just got to walk away. But that's going to be it for this one, guys. I'm off to the next one.